Anyway, anyway. What's up, guys? It is 9 o'clock a.m. U.S. Pacific st- Daylight Time. Standard time is in a couple weeks. Uh, here in Los Angeles, Monday, October 25th, 2021 A.D. Anno Domini. And I have some fun stuff to share with you guys. Some, well, I, don't, I think it's kind of fun. Just interesting, scrutinizing some of these women causing mess. In America, <laughs> as usual, right? I, you know how I normally like, if you've been watching for any amount of time, you probably have caught on, at least lately, that I normally like to play the Christian music stuff that I used to listen to, but I'm not going to do that right now. Just like on Friday, I am uh, going to skip that until the top of this coming hour, the second hour. And of course, at the end of the show. Isn't that nice? Oh, so I'm sparing you. All you guys who like to try to skip that music, you can hear it at the end if you love me. But guys, uh, I want to cover the fake refugee thing. There's a whole lot of, there's this woman who's pushing this stuff and she's being propped up by the mainstream media. Uh, the censorship thing, there's this woman who's on the Facebook oversight board and she's really evil. Fathers going feminist, if I have time. And, of course, your calls and some other things. Uh, Vaccine madness. Madness. Some males pushing the vaccine madness on healthy NBA players. What a joke, huh? But anyway, guys, let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh. I am fine. I hope you had a nice weekend. I did. I had a, a great, an excellent weekend. Had my Sabbath, Sabbath, Saturday, Sabbath. That's, that means your day off when you're quiet. And uh, hung out. Got to walk around, watch a couple movies. Went to church on Sunday, of course, right? I mean, I, can't, I don't really have a choice now. I'm the church producer. But I like going to church anyway. And after church, I went and played soccer for the first time. And, oh my gosh, I'm sore. I don't know if I'm sore from exercising or from the running around playing soccer. Hopefully, pray for me. Pray for me, guys. <laughs> that I don't injure myself. Because I felt like I was pulling my Achilles at one point, wrenching my back a couple of times. What a mess. I was going out there on Sunday to play soccer, pick up games. I used to do this on Sundays. And... I was like, I'm going to play at 20%. <laughs> that's, that's what I told myself. But if I, you lose, I lose, I don't know about you, I lose all uh, discipline to contain that only 20% effort when the ball comes close. What a mess. Anyway, guys, I have some things to cover for you. You can call in 888-775-3773. I am wearing a... You are a beta male t-shirt, courtesy of the Jesse Lee Peterson Spreadshirt store. This, is, this was JLP right here, pointing at Mark Ridley hyphen Thomas, a male feminist black, uh, suspected corrupt Los Angeles. And I'm, when I say corrupt, I don't mean just corrupt in my sense, which is the worst kind of corrupt that there is, because these... All Democrats and most Republicans are corrupt. They're liberals, they're, they're phonies, they're not strong, they're weak, they're female-minded, all that mess. That's what I mean by corrupt, but this guy is actually, maybe they're investigating him, the feds are investigating him for like, corruption. Mark Ridley-Thomas, I've talked about him. 
But, uh, yeah, rebuildingtheman.com slash stores if you want to get that shirt. Um, good morning, everybody. What's up to the Facebook crew? I'm going to be reading your super chats as well. But first, let me cover this story that I was talking about on Hake News at the end of hour two, I think, of the Jesse Lee Peterson show. About these fake refugees. You know how Afghanistan is a big mess right now? Uh, a couple of foreign countries like Sweden and Pakistan, they have ministers, whatever those are, who are saying Afghanistan's gonna collapse under economic mess because the Taliban has taken over and all, and basically Afghanistan, what I gather from this news, is that Afghanistan is a failing slash failed country that is just only alive because it's propped up. At least this is how they make it sound. Propped up by foreign assistance. From America and from other countries. Probably a lot from America. Who knows? Uh, Afghanistan will swiftly collapse. This is a CNN headline from Swedish and Pakistani ministers. Swiftly collapse if the international community does not come to its aid. What? Let them fail and then let them figure it out. That's what I suggest. But with all of this spoiling by these internationalist people, these globalists, these do-gooders... It's kind of bringing in more corruption, even though they're trying to prevent that from happening. What a mess, huh? Is that the mama spirit? I don't know. There, there are people who are reluctant, countries and international organizations reluctant to help Afghanistan with their development assistance because they don't want to, they don't want to legitimize the Taliban, right? It's ridiculous. Taliban rules who, rulers who took over in August. They've increased humanitarian aid, though. <sighs> Seems ridiculous to me. They're saying you have to work with the Taliban. And uh, if you let them go into free fall, terrorist groups will rise. Because they think poverty causes crime. Which it doesn't. It does not. But evil people exploit crises. And these people are evil and they call stuff a crisis that's not even a crisis. And they say, oh, this is a crisis. We need to step in. Well, in the United States, the sleepy Biden administration, as you probably already know, they're making what CNN calls massive changes to the refugee resettlement program. Refugee resettlement watch. Does refugee resettlement watch still exist? Refugee... Resettlementwatch.com. I don't know if it still works. It used to be a website. Refugee Resettlementwatch.com does not exist. Refugee Resettlement Watch. N with no E. Corcoran. I've looked this up online before. It is. Oh, okay. Refugee Resettlementwatch.org. Check it out if you want to know what's going on. This Ann Corcoran lady is on it. At least as of Saturday, she's posting on her blog. She's been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show when I was producer. Sh- shout out to Caroline from New York for the tip. It's a big mess going on. They have continually put it, pushed in more and more and more refugees. And now those refugees are bringing in even more refugees. What a mess. I'll explain that shortly. But Bi- Sleepy Biden wants permanent homes for the 55,600 Afghani who are not even refugees, according to the official definition. Evacuated from military bases and maybe their family members, a la chain migration, right? The abrupt arrival of evacuees strained, listen to for this word, strained, already overwhelmed, overwhelmed is another buzzword, Refugee resettlement agencies. And, as you know, we already have a housing crunch. And I said this in Hague News. That's their typical ploy. The communist ploy. At least according to what I read. I remember reading this one time. Overwhelm the system. Break it. So that you can swoop in with more false solutions. A power grab. Bring in these poor Im- immigrant people. So they're going to pair... A- a- Afghanis, as I call them, Afghans, with supposed Americans like veterans 
and other refugees who may not even be do they're just do-gooders they're not even Americans really who have had maybe some have had comp- contact with them in the past or they feel a connection with them through a shared experience just feel sorry for them I told you about this guy Matt Zeller a security fellow at the Truman National Security Project claimed that he's willing to open up his home for Afghans and their families. Psh. So this is what I had not read to you guys in Hake News at the end of Hour 2 of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show today. Refugee agencies have previously discussed the idea of private sponsorship. Because there's a whole lot of do-gooder people. And when I say do-gooders, I mean people who think that they're doing good by helping people with their free stuff stuff and really enabling this evil, this invasion, when we're already, we have, well, we don't have a job, a lack of jobs available, but we have a lack of pay, pay of it, low pay right now, because we have, like, so many immigrants and others all coming in. What a mess. The way the system currently works, an agency usually must have a local office or a network of community groups that will acquaint refugees with their new surroundings and help them get set up with housing and a job, among other services. What a mess. Think about how much the government is involved in this. Terrible. After four years of historic low arrivals of refugees under the Trump administration, thank you, President Trump, agencies had to close some of their offices around the countries. Fewer refugees, less money for them. Isn't that nice? Thank you, President Trump. So that limited where the refugees could be relocated. A significant hurdle at a time when housing options are already hard to come by. So, you know, they talk about, oh, we have the homelessness crisis. It's a housing crisis. Well, it's not a housing crisis. But it also, but there is a housing crisis, too. The homelessness mess is people just irresponsible, on drugs, getting taken care of, and allowed to be comfortable and allowed to be messy on the streets. And they like it. In a sick way. You know how you just wallow in your mess? And you kind of like it? It's like that. Sick. Here is this Mark Hetfield. President and CEO of HIAS. A refugee resettlement agency. We didn't just... We just didn't have the capacity after the beating we took under the Trump administration. See, Trump was making America great again. Uh, Chris Edwards says, hyperinflation. Yeah, that stuff is happening too. Whatever that is. I think that's when price is going up, right? Necessity is the mother of invention. This is the outcome of that, this Mark Hetfield guy. So he's going to just have the neighbors do it. Sponsorship-like system intended to allow greater flexibility and open more locations for refugees to go. Against the will of normal neighbors, but on the will of the uh, the phony people. By the phony people, the do-gooders. The Blinken State Department, Antony Blinken, sleazy, phony, wussy guy, if you don't, if you don't, if you will forgive my saying that word. <laughs> He got clowned by the, by China, right? Didn't he try to call out China? Was this the same guy who called out China for human rights violations? And they're like, well, you guys are having, you guys are violating blacks' human rights. <laughs> and it's all a bunch, a bunch of commie lies about each other's stuff. What a mess. Well, who knows what China's doing? The administration is working with Community Sponsorship Hub, a sponsored project of Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Philanthropy Advisors Incorporated. What a shame. Did you know that this, all this stuff was happening behind your back? And this stuff has been going on for years. So, oh yeah, 56,000 Afghan fake refugees, evacuees, is not that much. But this is going, goes on over and over and over again. New initiative would allow groups... Hold on, I lost my place would allow groups of five individuals over age 18 to apply as a so-called sponsor circle. So you, and you, and you, and you, and you, (laughs) can uh, get together a sponsor circle and bring in a bunch of refugees to your town or home. 
As part of the application, they will go through background checks, commit to fundraising in order to financially support evacuees up for up to 90 days, complete training, and develop a plan for the family. Look at all this mess. The government's involved in that. Usually the federal government provides a one-time payment of $2,275 for each refugee or Afghani, whatever. The groups will have to raise that same amount. Christine Babeki is an Air Force veteran, and she's a woman, Kristen. Kristen Bab- Babiki, Air Force vet, who quote-unquote served in Afghanistan in 2009 under the Obama administration, recently reunited with her Afghan interpreter at a military base in Virginia. He has relatives in Virginia. And we're bringing in these people... And people say, oh, some of them are criminals. That's not the main issue. Or some of them are terrorists. That's not the main issue. The vast majority of them don't have our values. They end up voting Democrat. They end up crying racism against the whites. What a mess. She, uh, she was all happy because she wanted to talk to her Afghan refugee interpreter. But he's not a refugee. It's not just veterans who are lining up to, res- to assist refugees themselves. You see we're bringing in refugees, and they're causing more mess. Listen to this. Refugees with shared experiences are now coalescing to support Afghans once they come off the bases in the Uni- United States, including a group of Vietnamese Americans, quote-unquote, in Washington State. And so I looked up this person. Well, hold on. The last time the U.S. resettled anywhere close to this number of, ref- of evacuees with such a short period, you know, the 56,000, was after the U.S. withdrawal from Vietnam, which was also a big mess, right? More than 130,000 people came from Vietnam to the United States over an eight-month period some decades back. Remember that? I don't remember it, but I remember seeing images of this stuff. And I do know a lot of I ran, when I was in high school, I ran into a, I didn't run into them. I spotted a bunch of Vietnamese. Our goal is to provide an allyship between the Vietnamese community and Afghan community. This is what this, this Vietnamese refugee American do-gooders are saying. And use our shared refugee experience not only to help the Afghan community, but to advocate for what they're going through and will be going through, says... And any, any, uh... Any of you guys know how to pronounce Vietnamese names? Uyen Nguyen. And I know that Nguyen is pronounced Win, right? But it's spelled Nguyen. N-G-U-Y-E-N. But they pronounce it Win. But Uyen, I don't know how to pronounce that. Win? Win, win? (laughs) Co-founder of Viets for Afghans. Viet's number four Afghans group. And I'm like, is that a dude? So I thought it was a dude at first. Nguyen, or Wen, and four others have already set up a group and prepared to sponsor Afghans in Washington State. Oh, I forgot to take, pic- I forgot to bring in pictures of this woman. Let me see if I can dig them up. Because this woman is a mess. I'll see if I can do that. But she's, I searched this name, and at first I found a male... Black Lives Matter, Asian, young male, who on Instagram, with this name, Uyen Win. But no, that wasn't him. It was a woman. Okay, I found one. All right. Vietnamese Americans once displaced themselves, mobilized to help Afghans. She got a New York Times article written about her. It's ridiculous. Seattle Times, she wrote a piece in Seattle Times, this Uyen Win woman. All, all refugees, like me, she says, should have a shot at the American dream, she says in an op-ed. Oh, is that all of them? Let me see if I can, uh, oh my goodness, it's ridiculous. Drag this into the folder, just so you can see, like, she looks like this nicey, nicey. Asian woman. I dragged a few screenshots just into the folder so you can see. For many who made it into the United States, watching the chaotic exit from Afghanistan, says New York Slimes, 
evoked memories of their own harrowing experiences. And no doubt these people believe in racism, accuse Trump of racism and all this stuff. Uyen Win, age 46, is an entrepreneur in Seattle, Washington. She felt compelled to help Afghans because of her experience fleeing Vietnam at age 10. And no doubt, you know who else was a refugee? So-called refugee? Uh, Ilhan Omar. <laughs> Ilhan Omar was a so-called refugee. And she's causing mess. Look at this. This is from Oxfam. Oxfam is another evil organization subverting America. British-founded confederation of 20 independent charitable organizations focused on alleviating global pro- poverty. Founded in 1942. Winnie Biniyama was the executive director uh, for some time. Look at this woman. Sitting on her bed, acting all innocent. She's... This is what the uh, Oxfam thing says. Oxfam are do-gooders. Violence, persecution, and war have forced more than 65 million people to flee their homes. As Uyen Win shares here, their search for safety in a new home can take decades. Her story underscores the precarious position many refugees face, especially given the Trump administration's decision, because this is from 2018, to reduce the number of refugees entering the United States. Uyen Win was 10 when her parents made the heart-wrenching decision to leave southern Vietnam. And Vietnamese, I'll just let you know, just a side note, when I said that I've spotted Vietnamese, the way I know that they're Vietnamese is because they sound like they're doing a caricature of some Asian dialect. It's like obnoxious. I might impersonate it, but I don't feel, I don't feel like up to impersonating it right now. But it's an obnoxious, oh my gosh. You ever heard Vietnamese? Oh my gosh. Not, never mind, I don't want to do it. But I like pho. But I'm not, I'm not willing to keep that pho as soup. I'll give up that soup stuff to send these people back. Uyên Nguyen, her grandfather was a high-ranking government official and her father was put in a reintegration camp. This is her message. When I see how the world is responding to refugees right now, I just feel like society looks at refugees like they're dangerous, she said. They are! Especially her. Because she's bringing in these people thinking, oh, we're all, we're all, we only love Lin, Lin Yen Chin. <laughs> Lin Yen Chin, I don't think he's Vietnamese. Jib Jab says, pho is delicious. It's, it's spelled pho, P-H-O. Hey, eat ramen. No, I don't. Like ramen. Uh, we are all humans. Oh my gosh, turn on the AC. The, we need the AC, please. And open up the vent, too. Uh, we are all humans. At the end of the day, we are trying to live similar lives, she says. Some of us don't have the fortune to die in a bed of their choosing, like my mother, brother, and sister. But all humans have the desire to dream and to get the most out of life. Like she... Doesn't really know English. They put the out in there. Um, provide for their kids and have a s- healthy and safe life with a roof over their heads. What a mess. Go back and take your soup with you, says. <laughs> ramen is nasty, I agree. <laughs> Except for top ramen, the stuff that you cook it yourself. Anyway. What a mess, huh? Terrible. I have another evil woman to share with you. But, uh, why? I don't know. I don't like the egg. I don't know. It's just weird. Anyway, let me read some Super Chats, guys. At least one, anyway. Uh, shout out to BB42 for the support. Nora says BB42 with a Super Chat, referring to something that happened on the Jason Lee Peterson show. But thank you, BB42. Appreciate it. Nora was a hilarious call on Jesse's show today. I wonder if her middle name is Obama. Obama. Nora, if you're listening, please call Hake and confirm this. (laughs) I doubt it, Baby42, but thank you. Also, happy birthday, Hake. And the AC feels great, too. Yeah, I can tell it's my birthday because the AC is on in the studio. Much needed. Guess you don't like umami. What's umami? Umami burger? I don't know. 
Hey, sweating like an anchor, baby. <laughs> Umami is the taste in ramen. Huh. I don't know. I, I don't know. It has uh, weird things in it. What a mess. What a mess. Top ramen is delicious. <laughs> you can get them for like 49 cents. Do you eat it with two sticks? Yes. You eat it with the two sticks and the scooper thing. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you for the super chats, guys. As well as from uh, Friday. Man, Friday was rough. Friday. Well, it was rough in that my back was getting tired of sitting here. And then sometimes it would get kind of hot. And then my voice is kind of tired. It seemed like I lost my voice even before I started. I wonder if my, my in the back of my mind, it knew that I was going to be talking for five hours. But thank you guys for calling in. I enjoyed talking with you, the JLP callers, as well as the Hake callers. Uh, you can call in 888-775-3773. Make sure you get your Get a Job t-shirts, your, or t-shirts and stickers. Your just JLP stuff. And all of that. And actually, before I talk to another one of these women... About another one of these women, I mean. And by the way, Ann Corcoran is an example of a decent woman. She, uh, seemingly decent anyway, if there is such a thing. Uh, she is looking out for the refugee mess on our behalf. And so, refugeeresettlementwatch.org. Great guest, on former guest on the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. I don't know if we have any of her interviews up on YouTube, but you can... Look out for them, and if not, if it's pertinent, maybe I can uh, upload some of those things. Before I get to this other, even worse woman, just outright malicious, anti-Christian, I wanted to cover this story of this vaccine, this forced vaccination thing. It is sick, and this man... Why do none of the people who are pushing these forced vaccinations seem trustworthy? Or forcing people to get their vaccines seem trustworthy? This is clip, uh, 17. Uh, Breitbart reported this. Commissioner, NBA commissioner, Adam Silver. And I've seen this guy before. I first noticed this guy when they took away the team of, uh, Donald Sterling. Forcefully took his team away from him. Some people say he got compensated. That's not just. It's not just. And it's not based on anything except for, oh, this imaginary racism thing. Donald Sterling said, told V. Stiviano, or whatever her name was, his assistant, don't hang out with blacks, black men. He said it, like, on the phone or in person with her. And she secretly recorded him, which is illegal in California. But was she charged or sued? I don't even know. She's this Instagram model type person with a weird looking messed up face. Messed up as in like she had plastic surgery so that she's probably unrecognizable to what she originally looked like, which was probably mildly attractive. And now she looks a mess. But he was, even though he's married, this Donald Sterling guy, he was hanging out with her. What a mess. And so this Adam's... This Adam Silver guy, not a Christian, by the way, was part of the lynch mob to go after him and take him out, along with a bunch of other team, uh, team owners, including that joke of a person who knew it was wrong, but he went along with it like a coward. Uh, who's that guy from Shark Tank? He has, like, dark hair. He's, like, Italian. He looks like he's Italian, but I think he's actually Jewish. Um... Uh, Cuban, Mark Cuban, that guy, he knew it was wrong. And every time, every now and then, guys like him will show like a flash of fairness. But don't fall for it, because he's a snake. He was a Trump hater later, everything. So anyway, there's this guy, is this the guy who's a flat earther, or we've never been to the moon guy, Kyrie Irving, or is he not? You know, there's been a couple of, a few NBA players who are kind of independent thinking. Sometimes they may believe stuff that's not true. I don't know. But Kyrie Irving, I think that he's already had the virus or 
maybe I'm mis- confusing him with that Christian young man, 23-year-old Christian young man, who already caught the virus and decided not to get vaccinated. He's 23 years old, and he's healthy and fit. And so he doesn't want to get the, the vaccine. It's a slight risk. Oh, he's Jewish-Italian. Thank you, man. Um, at least according to Christian Torres. No, Chris, according to somebody else. Man, this chat goes kind of fast sometimes. But Kyrie Irving didn't want to get this, this thing. And it's his right. And these people are not at risk. These players going, playing with him, they're not at risk from this thing, particularly. I mean, maybe, maybe a few of them are. <laughs> it confuses a lot of blacks. Maybe some of them are, right? Because every now and then, somebody may get the virus and it hurts them. Well... Here is NBA Commissioner Adam Silver taking a question from this guy, and he addresses Kyrie Irving, get facts, be like everybody else. Listen to this. Adam, let's talk. uh, Look, your league is uh, at 96% vaccination rate uh, uh, among your players. Uh, But there's so much talk about one of the guys who hasn't done it, Kyrie Irving. And so now, and you have said, look, this is not an NBA uh, against Kyrie or versus Kyrie thing. This is a New York City law or regulation uh, in in how it pertains to Kyrie. Yet it is an issue that impacts uh, the product that's put on the floor. If you could sit down with Kyrie Irving, what would you tell him? I'd tell him to get vaccinated first and foremost for himself and his family, next for his teammates um, and his community, and also for the league that I know he cares so much about. Um, I understand, you know, that it's not just Kyrie. There are people in this country um, who disagree with the notion of getting vaccinated. But look at that face. At least from everything that I understand, science is firmly on the side of getting vaccinated, and this is. In essence, a miracle vaccine. Think where we were, Ernie, you know, when we first stopped the season and we all spoke, and then when we went into the bubble and we started last season, and then this vaccine came along, and it's already saved tens of millions of lives. And I think at some point, you know, for Kyrie to be an engaged member of society, putting aside this league, he needs to get vaccinated. And that's, you said, that's the law in New York. And the law in New York is if you want to play in an arena, if you want to visit an arena, (laughs) you want to participate in an activity in an arena, you need to be vaccinated. And that's where he finds himself, and that's where we are as a league. And here I am in Milwaukee, where after we give out the rings tonight, the Bucks will be playing the Nets. And I wish he were here. Look at this guy. Look at that face. Will you trust that face? This guy, If those of you guys listening on the audio podcast... This guy is like super skinny, bald, looks like a white, but don't fall for it. It's no normal white. Um, not a Christian. And he's a snake feeding into the notion that this, that these communist shutdowns in the name of, look at it. There you go. Thank you, Chris. That these, co- look at that. Oh, uh, that these communist shutdowns in the name of the Chinese virus were necessary. They weren't. But as a cover, they're saying, oh, you have to get the vaccine. And that's in order for us to open back up again. And so they're blaming the victims for their own crime, shutting down the country. Ridiculous. And by the way, indeed, according to Big Bump, shout out Big Bump, Kyrie Irving is a flat earther, but supposedly he said he was joking and apologized for any misunderstanding. I heard, remember when I first brought this up, I, Stephen Curry did it too, back in 2018. Kyrie Irving weighs in on a Stephen Curry's moon landing comments, calls the reactions unfair. Irving has had some experience of his own floating a conspiracy theory and getting a pre, pretty heated reaction as a result. Because I think that it was Stephen Curry, the Obama buddy, if you will. <laughs> I don't want to say it. I don't want to be vulgar, but he's like buddy-buddy with Obama, Steph Curry. He's supposed to be a Christian. He's this light-skinned black guy who's in the NBA. One of the top guys, actually. But he caused a major stir when he, it was revealed in a podcast appearance, he doubted the moon landing. They're like, favorite 
Favorite conspiracy theories. Moon landing. We never, we never, we never landed on the moon. <laughs> I bet you Skip would agree with that. Actually, quite a few of my uh, listeners are like, the Earth is flat and we've never been to the moon. Thank you, globe tard, Hake. Ball tard. Round tard. <laughs> Anybody who thinks that the wor- world is round is called a ball tard or a globe tard. Anyway, uh, Curry spent the following days walking back his remarks. NASA spoke out and invited Curry to Stephen Curry to tour the Johnson Space Center in Houston, and he accepted. Got backlash from the science community. It's not a community. Anyway. But anyway, uh, Irving had a, had a response. He said, sometimes I feel like even myself, you can speak ahead of yourself whether or not you believe it or not, and you end up getting caught because you're on this false platform of a thing where you're not even a human being anymore. Interesting point. You're now extrapolated for all the information that you know and think. (laughs) I think he's misusing words here. And you have to fit a mold of something that you're clearly not. You're more than just a basketball player that puts it up to the hoop, and then they subject you to being just that. It's unfair at times. Obviously, we're not as educated in, in terms of schooling, in terms of knowledge of going to school to these universities, everyone, I think I probably, I think probably that misjudgment is warranted. It's natural. Everybody feels like they have a place in this world to question anything or question somebody. What a nice guy. Look at what social media has done nowadays. This is Kyrie Irving talking. He was talking after this uh, moon landing mess with Steph Curry. (laughs) I liked Steph Curry better when he was a moon landing denier. Actually, he was a Trump... Buddy, buddy, even before that. Um, Anybody could say anything on Twitter, but one thing someone says with a check next to their name is the biggest thing going. Nothing's really original. Isn't this interesting what he's saying? It's just history repeating itself. Well, he's kind of saying a whole lot of mess. All over again. We've had people in history say some things that they believed and they stuck with their whole entire lives, whether they be prominent individuals or society or in society or not. So I try not to pay attention to that mold at all. I try not to pay attention to whether it's insulting or not. I don't live my life based on biases or judgments. Nor do I base it on thinking or judging someone else for what they believe in as well. Isn't that nice? Thank you, Kyrie Irving. Uh, It's where we live in America where people say blank all the time about one another. And it's mean bad. Kids see it. Like everyone gets a piece of it. And it's the next story. Next there's coming... Next thing that's coming out of someone's mouth, there's world hunger going on, like political things going on. There's so many higher things on the totem pole of society that matter to human beings. But hey, Steph Curry says that he doesn't believe in the moon landing. It's a thing all over again. It's on CNN, and they say we're just jocks, we're just athletes, but it's on your channel. You know what I mean? We're that, but you don't want us to be that. And so whoever you is, then I don't know what mold you want me to be. Interesting, huh? Meanwhile, they'll use these people, they'll pay them, support Black Lives Matter, uh, all these different people, all these different top players, support Black Lives Matter, support Biden, support, tell them to get vaccinated. Give me a break, these phony people. Exploiting, because they know that these people are influential to impressionable young people who are kind of young and dumb. Terrible. (laughs) What a mess. Anyway, um, thank you, thank you, Kyrie Irving, for standing your ground, I guess, right? By the way, somebody else who acted like he knew what he was talking about, and sometimes he says stuff that's controversial, but he's not standing with the independent thinkers this time. Listen to Charles Barkley, according to Breitbart. Charles Barkley blasts Kyrie Irving. You don't get the vaccine for yourself. And apologies if the clip is loud or quiet or whatever. I tried to make it so that it's correct. Listen to Charles Barkley standing with the establishment, cowering before the establishment. Or maybe he's really this dumb, who knows. Listen to this. Your buddy over here is grimacing, Chuck. First of all, you don't get the vaccine for yourself. You get it for other people. No, I'm not saying. Hold on, for I want you said your piece. No, I'm saying. I, I didn't listen, say you do. I I got vaccinated. I can't wait to get the booster. 
I don't you don't get vaccinated just for yourself. Like Adam said, you get vaccinated for your family first. You get vaccinated for your teammates second, things like that. That's what bothers me about this whole thing. I think everybody should get vaccinated. The only and let me tell you something, I really am proud of the Nets for putting their foot down. Uh, for saying, no, we're not going to deal with this half on, uh, half on, half off. The only thing that bugged me, he's still going to make $17 million sitting at home. Mm -hmm. I wish they could find a way. If he wants to go on this thing, like, you know, people say he's like Ali. First of all, don't ever compare anybody to Ali. Ali went three years without boxing. <laughs> he was the highest paid athlete in the world. This guy going to make $17 million for sitting at home. But to every person out there, you don't get vaccinated just for yourself. Let's don't, get that out the way. Just crazy, huh? And I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Wow, Barkley is usually smarter than that, says Robbie. What's up, the Facebook crew? Yeah, he's kind of hit and miss. He's from the South. He's older. He's long retired. He was a, he was on top when I was a kid, and I was a kid like 35 years ago <laughs> or something. Well, anyway, 30 years ago. Uh... This guy, and he's all, you don't compare anything to Muha to Ali. He's talking about Muhammad Ali, who didn't Muhammad Ali join the Nation of Islam, the NOI? That's not a good thing. He joined the Nation of Islam, and then he said, I can't join the, the war because it's against my religion. <laughs> Which I don't blame anybody not wanting to join the war and, and, and all that mess. That was during, like, Vietnam, right? Was it Vietnam? Hey, watch the NBA back in the day. Well, a little bit. Not really. A little, though. I knew of Charles Barkley. Don't compare anything to Muhammad Ali. They worship Muhammad Ali, whose real name was Cassius Clay, right? Cassius Clay? He was named after a... He was named after, like, an, an Irishman who... I think it was, like, an open-minded Irishman who married a black woman. And so that's how they came out with years... Maybe a few generations later, it came out with Cassius Clay, and then he changed his name to Muhammad Ali, a slave name, a slave master name, a Muslim slave master name, forsaking his white and black Christian American ancestors to support evil. What a coward, Muhammad Ali. But he was a good fighter. So, don't compare anything to Muhammad Ali. No, Kyrie Irving is better than Muhammad Ali. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe people laugh at that. Maybe they agree, though. In terms of his mindset, I think he's better. And then there's that Christian guy who's ref refused to, to get the vax. I haven't really heard much from him anymore. I haven't heard much from him anymore. Open-minded Irish farmer or something like that was what I read in... Uh, the antidote. That's what I read in The Antidote. Healing America from the poison of hate, blame, and victimhood. J.C. Lee Peterson's book. Talking about Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X. Because Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, they accuse their ancestors of rape. Their white ancestors of rape. Talk about being simps. Just because a white Irishman, and I say white a little bit loosely, <laughs> No, the Irish are white enough to be hated nowadays, right? So, yes, we accept them. And the Italians, too. Am I being too generous? Italians tend to be Democrats. Uh, I'm torn on this, on these, on this, are Italians and the Irish white thing. But these people are sick. There is this guy, Adam Swerwer, Swerwer? who is a writer for The Atlantic, I want to say, who said, who is l l really light-skinned. I think he's Jewish and black. But you wouldn't even know that he has any black in him. And I don't know, it's kind of, unless you really have an eye for it, it's difficult to distinguish what Jews look like, unless like, you really know. And so this guy is like this weird-looking person. And he's accusing his ancestors of rape, his white ancestors. Talk about disgusting, disgraceful. That's like the Me Too movement. Hake seems Irish. Take it back. <laughs> no, I think there is an Irishman in my uh, genealogy. But more, I think I'm more Scottish than that. So, 
Azador gave a super chat on Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com slash at The Hague Report and said, Ali refused to serve his country when drafted. Irving's cause is far more righteous than Ali's. Thank you. That's clarity. That's clarity. So, uh, yeah, eat it, uh, Charles Barkley. And anyway, these people are saying all this stuff. Oh, it saved tens of millions of people, Adam Silver said. I don't buy that. Show me the proof. And I don't even know if I would believe the proof because it's so impossible to know what, what the real truth is. Radio shock jock Howard Stern on Tuesday complained about censorship. He called Irving the biggest, biggest idiot in the country right now. In terms of idiots, he's got to be the top idiot in the country right now. Guy's got a chance to be, as a young man, to make millions of dollars. All he's got to do is get vaccinated, but he doesn't want to get vaccinated. I'm sorry, Mr. Stern, Howard Stern. He, maybe he wants to take care of his temple, his body. And he doesn't quite know or trust this thing yet. Because there is a lot of dishonest people pushing this mess. So he got suspended, this Kyrie Irving guy. He got suspended by his team, New York Nets. I don't care about basketball anyway. I'd rather play it. If my back can take it. <laughs> oh, what a mess. Anyway, let me get to some calls, guys. I appreciate you guys bearing with me. Thing Is Howard Stern still a thing? Yeah, I mean, barely. He's become a joke. Haik looks Jewish. <laughs> Haik looks Israel- Israeli, says everything is fake. I've been told that by uh, y- you guys. I think maybe because my nose is a little crooked and my nose is bigger. But n- to my knowledge, I am not. <laughs> Haik is 11% Jewish, says chat monkey. To my knowledge, I'm not. Uh, anyway, let me take some calls, guys. Lines are filling up. John in Kentucky wants to talk about Cassius Clay. What's up, John? How are you doing? Thanks for calling. I'm doing all right, and you do have a huge nose. Thank you. You know who else does? You know who else does? Who's that Your woman father? that I showed? <laughs> Who's that Your woman father? that I showed last week? Anyway, go hey, on. Uh, I'll tell you, you who else is a big nose. You mischaracterized Ali, man. He is an icon, and uh, and uh, Kyrie Irving is not. He's just taking a stance on an important topic. So right you're now, saying but, you're saying Kyrie Irving is taking a, a stance on an important topic? Yes, but I'm it saying is Ali is the icon, huh? It is important. You're saying. Yes, it's important. So you agree I, with not, you? Do you agree with Kyrie Irving's stance that he's taking? Yes, I'm taking the same stance. I ain't doing it unless I have to. What would do you know? What choice. would make you have to? Uh, if my job was to say, look, you have to have it or you couldn't work, I would. I would have to do it for my family. So, dang, that'd be the only reason. That'd yeah. be the only reason I take it. Well, man, I, I, I respect whatever you decide. I mean, I, I definitely respect your not wanting to take this thing because it's, you don't know, you're, you're a young man. You're not fat, are you? You're fit? No, I'm not, I'm not fat. But, <laughs> you know, my thing about the, the vax or whatever, it's like nobody trusts the government anymore, which you shouldn't. So I don't want to take it. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust anything but the people close to me. So I'm not going to take something. Yeah, people don't, people it's understandable. Have so many question marks about. Yeah, and be and we have a we have what um, what's that what's that guy? White Rabbit Radio said on uh, a few Saturdays ago we have a low trust environment. We have the mainstream right. media is quite dishonest in their coverage. We have phony people at the top. We have a subverted uh, scientific community, and it's no wonder that there's so many flat earthers because these people are such liars. That you're gonna, uh, people are gonna start believing all kinds of crazy things. There's blacks who think that they're black Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> <laughs> um, this man loves so, to like. <laughs> go ahead. I like man, to do little ahead. side jabs, huh? Because yeah, uh, you want me to get on that topic. No, no, I don't really want to. If you want to, that's fine. But uh, the NAACP well, LDF head Sherilyn Eiffel also has a huge nose. <laughs> Okay, man. Okay, that's important. Yes, it but is. <laughs> look, Ali, Ali said I'm not going over to Viet- Vietnam and fight them. He don't have a he don't have a, a beef with them. He got a beef with the white man in the country he was living in. And honestly, you know, he, I don't think that he even really had an honest beef with the white man. I think that he was. I think his beef with his is with his family who raised him 
so poorly no. that he became a Muslim. Do you respect him becoming a Muslim? Uh, well, that, that's up to him. He's a man. No, I, mean, I know, but do you him. respect him becoming a Muslim? If you were a black Hebrew Israelite well, talking him? to your brother, to your brother, Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, the icon, would you advise he stay, he become an Israelite rather, or a Christian rather than a Muslim? I would, I would, uh, rather he be, I'd rather he know he was an Israelite. Yeah, you know, or whatever, but, whatever, but not a not but a I still black respect Muslim. him for taking a stance. I still respect him for taking a stance. I don't I know mean, because was, people take stands that the, are so wrong. He was the champion of the world, and you still got to go through the back door to, to eat at a restaurant. <laughs> What's good with that, man? That, that's like no respect whatsoever. So why go fight for a country to treat you that way? Uh, it makes come no on. sense to I that type of person. First of all, I don't even know if that's true. Second that's of true. all. I don't know. I don't. I don't know because just because you're telling me it's true, I don't know if it's true. And well, second look, man, of all, my, that's at least he still gets to eat at the restaurant. We can't even eat at many restaurants. That makes no sense. That makes no sense, Hank. You, you don't settle for less. You don't let people disrespect you. You take a stand. No, my you dad do. Sometimes you let people listen, disrespect. Listen, listen. Yeah. My dad fought in Vietnam, and when he came back, he still has to go by these unwritten rules with, you know, white people. You, you, you got to get off the sidewalk. You can't look a man in the eye, a white man in the eye. You got to go through the back of the restaurant. You got to sit at the top balcony when you go to the movie theater. You know, white that's a better seat anyway. Little, you can say that all you want and make jokes, man. But I'm look, not joking. Sometimes like you put up with uh, an honorable people man don't, puts up with disrespect with grace. People don't not like bitterness. being treated less than. And An honorable you, you, you man puts up with being treated less than with grace, not bitterness. You get respect from your own people when you stand up against people treating you that way. And then there's a time for that. There's there may be a time for that. I don't know if all of this stuff that you're claiming is true, and I don't know how well, bad any of that stuff was. They were trying to segregate. To do you know why? You, do you support segregation? Uh, nowadays, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's See? a choice, man. See, they wanted I, I to deal know. with it. These people, the, the Jim Crow South, they were trying to deal with the problem of diversity because this diversity problem, you see how people are infighting, accusing whites of racism and being ridiculous. Yeah, y'all y'all and, power hungry. Y'all, y'all want to be at the top. And no, the people who are power do. hungry are the ones crying racism. Whites no, are not the at the top, are, buddy. The people who are power hungry are the ones losing power. You have no idea what one. you're talking about. Now you're just I rambling. Have, I, I do know what I'm no, talking about. No, you do about. not. You do not. Why you think all y'all and he is, are screaming, and have I want you ever my questioned back? I want my country back. Yeah, have you ever questioned the fact that Muhammad Ali is a so-called icon? What do you mean? Because he is respected question. by the mainstream media. Doesn't that make you question if he really should be respected? Do you respect yeah, the but, people who respect uh, who are respected the, in the mainstream media? The mainstream media has become more corrupt as as generations went on. And the it more corrupt they get, the more bad. they honor people like Muhammad Ali. Doesn't that make well, you question yourself, your assumptions? He deserves it. I mean, if, if you can honor Christopher Columbus, I'm sure we can honor Muhammad Ali. Christopher Columbus was more of an honorable man than Muhammad Ali. No freaking way. Yes. Only to, only to his way. people. <laughs> only to his people. So it doesn't make you question it at all that the mainstream media honors this guy. Not Muhammad Ali, no. Does it make you question things when the mainstream media hypes some other, some black guy or other? Well, certain people, yeah. Did I mean, you vote you can, for Obama? It, it's clear. No, man, you asked me that before. Yeah, I forget but but what your answer was. It, you did not. It's clear to see when they prop up certain people how shady they are. Now, I mean, back in the day, I think leaders were more uh, genuine. But nowadays, it's just, man, everything is business. For sure. Everything is business. Uh, Vladimir Vendez. Uh, says, the caller is power hungry. He's projecting. That's right. You think you're going to rule because you're a black Hebrew right. Israelite. You well, think I mean, you're going to rule. I believe, you, uh, I believe every word of the Bible. That's why. You know, I, I wouldn't Isn't always... that convenient that, it make, that, it, that you think the Bible says that you are the true Israelite and we are scum and you're superior to me? <laughs> I go by the prophecies, man. I go by the prophecies. Isn't that convenient, though? When I look at the prophecy, it's I not have convenient. to make a decision. Answer Listen, if it's convenient have, or not. That the Bible, in your mind, makes you the true Israelite, and you're superior to James Hake. <laughs> well, if, if you read the whole Bible, is it convenient? Answer if it's convenient. 
you can say it's convenient if you want. It and is. It's, <laughs> and it's inconvenient for you, right? Uh, no, because I don't believe your mess. <laughs> it's not inconvenient yeah. for me. I like talking honest, to you guys. In fact, it's very honest, convenient. It's very convenient for the fun of this show that black Hebrew Israelites it's fun are, for are you calling now. into my show. It's fun for you now. Hey. <laughs> See? Power hungry. I'm just telling you. Power I'm just hungry. telling you, man. I'm just telling you. It's fun for you now. But if you go by scripture, but you will man, bow. <laughs> everything, everything that y'all did will I bow to you? come back on you. Will I bow to you? I would love that. You would, would love, love that. <laughs> I would love it, man. Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell would you I bow to you or would I bow to black Jesus? Well, all of us are going to bow to black Jesus. I know, but, but will, most, the, will, the, will, the goyim, will the goyim bow to you? Uh, oh, you don't call us that, I, huh? No, that's, that's, that's the, the white Jesus. Oh, <laughs> you almost slipped and that's said it. the white Jesus. <laughs> you almost slipped and, and, and said look, it. That's that's another thing. All of y'all are the same. Like, <laughs> Will we bow to you? Answer the Irish. question. Will we bow to you? Do you want to bow to me, man? I'm asking. Is it, you want me to bow are to you? Are you trying to have some? Are you trying to have some fun? No. Listeners? Answer no the answer question. Stupid questions. It's not a stupid question. Somebody, Jeremiah. I don't want to even say his name, but I already said it. Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he said you will bow. I like bow. Jeremiah. You like him because he wants to whip me and hurt, hit me and hurt me and kill me. I mean, that's the out. enjoyment I get from the show, <laughs> listening to people like Jeremiah. Well, answer, answer if we're supposed to bow to you later. All right, so this is how it's going to be. I'm going to tell you. No, it's just a yes or no. Are we supposed Everything's to bow to you? Flipped, I don't want to hear a long story. I got to go. That's not long. It's going to be flipped. But no, you know just tell me. Are... Yes or no, we're going to bow to you. M- maybe not me, but maybe uh, somebody like me. Or, may- or maybe. I don't so know. So they're going to bow to Israelites. Not to Jesus, but yes. to Israelites. Both. 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 Jesus is going to sit Jesus on Jesus and the Jesus Israelites. Sit on... <laughs> yeah. What a mess. I mean, it's not funny, though. It's, it's actually true. Hey, you got to read your Bible. That's why I asked you, do you, uh, do you but believe did, in But aren't you the one who said the Bible? Oh, no. Somebody else told me the Bible's not for me. Oh, it's not. It's not. So then why, how, come you guys, how come you guys call you. in citing the Bible you. to us? If it's not because for it, us, why you because it Bible you. thump on us? It tells you what's going to happen. It te- it gives you the prophecy. It tells you. So what's then, it happen. is for us. Not for you, as far as like uh, giving the instruction and the law. That's for us. That's what the Bible's full of. That's for us. So then, how come you're all mad at us for sinning? Y'all can't sin because the law wasn't given to y'all. Nice, nice. It wasn't given to y'all. It was only given to the Israelites. All right, man. Last word for you. Last word. Go ahead. I, I really don't have a, a, a last word. I just okay. want to tell you that Muhammad Ali is an icon, and he's not some type of. Um, he's a chump. No, and he's, he's not. He's he, dead. He would have beat. He would have beat the crap out of you with all time. I mean, not all time, but that uh, Parkinson's. Parkinson's. Disease. He would have beat the crap out of you. I don't care. Shaky hands he's, and he's all. He's not alive to do it. Shaky hands and all. <laughs> anyway, man, have a nice day. All right, man. Get back to your boring show. All right. <laughs> My, so boring that he had to call in. And almost every day. <laughs> what a mess. We are close to the top of the hour, guys. I will get back to more calls. Um, and I have another evil woman to cover, right? Right? But first, let me play I uh, You Know Who's Back. OK is back. That's right. I like OK. And you will, too. You're going to like it. <laughs> this is from the um, 2006 or 2000. No, I think it's 2008 album. Uh, Huggable Dust. I know, it sounds soft. But this track is the first track on this album. It is entitled My. My. M-Y. It's English. Enjoy My by OK. Grin and Barrett, you musical Philistines, press mute, um, no, no lyrics on the screen, guys, it's just the album art. They didn't, he didn't include lyrics in the, in the liner notes for the CD. Uh, press mute, I will be right back, and at the end of this song, I'll be talking you through it. Enjoy, guys. My, by OK.
I can show It's my heart You got More than hooray More than I can say It's my heart I'm gonna say this guy sounds like, like Gallop, Gollum. This music causes cancer. Very creepy voice. Says Skip. No. Okay is not okay. Not bored. Thank you, Chrissy. Okay is soft, <laughs> says Steven Absolution. No lie there. Well, thank you for bearing with me through that, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave the cats alone, <laughs> says Misty. 8976. Sounds like a cat being tortured. Is that what you're trying to say? Anyway, yeah, huggable dust. Some people said it's terrible. It's the midget again. <laughs> now this is good music. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, guys, uh, I will be checking for Super Chats. Chain smoker voice. The guy, this is the guy, Marty Anderson of OK. I don't know if he's still alive. I think he might be, though. He's an artist. Um, absolutely kosher records. Skip asks, is that a Jewish record label? <laughs> Maybe so. Probably so. Marty Anderson himself may even be that. Um, He's the only not this is the only non-Christian music that I've played on my show uh, from my music that I've listened to back in the day. Reminds me of Galaxy 500, says Radulazer. Bobby gets Bobby kicks cats to Hake's music. Kicks cats to Hake's music. Absolutely kosher records up in Berkeley, California. Marty Anderson had a crazy kinds of Crohn's disease. That was pretty rough. Uh, so, salute to him. Great music. I like it. His voice, I understand that some people don't like it at first. This, this album was humanely slaughtered. <laughs> yes and indeed. Louis Bootsy says Muhammad Ali was a draft dodger. Wow. Some super chats for you guys before I get back to calls. Bibby42 says, with the super chat, when you look at Adam Silver, who's that skinny guy who's the NBA commissioner, who's telling people, oh, get vaccinated, uh, it's hard not to believe, oh, gosh, I can't say that. Should I say this? It's hard not to believe that he is a fill-in-the-blank, right? Evil to children. What an evil person. Ah, oh, come on. Don't say that. Don't slander. Don't slander or libel. But I understand that goes into your mind because the world is so evil. But, <laughs> oh, come on. Baby 42. But I, I appreciate it. He's saying it's hard not to. I don't I can't repeat it. <laughs> I won't let myself repeat it. 
But you guys caught my drift with what he was saying, I think, right? Single mom doing her best says, I think Hake should make commentary by talking at the same pace that he reads. He'll fit more content into his show that way. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk as fast as I read. I'm not, I'm not, uh, a Daily Wire guy. <laughs> you guys notice that, I mean, I don't listen to them a lot, but Ben Shapiro talks fast, and then that other guy talks a lot like Ben Shapiro when he was, like, spouting off at the people who were, um, what are they called? The school board members. Matt Walsh. He sounded a lot like Ben Shapiro. I don't know if I can do that, single mom doing her best. And I don't know if you guys would like it. I would fit more content in that way, I guess. Single mom doing her best. <laughs> this is a funny one. Gave a super chat. And asked, can you please stop playing me Merrick Garland's music? We get it. He used to play an okay. No need to remind us. <laughs> and that's... Not true, but it is funny because his voice is truly sickening and disturbing. I say that, uh, that Merrick Garland's voice is gross. Ugh. Sick. Makes you shudder. And I don't know if it was a smoker voice or what, but he sounded, uh, he, Chris said he sounded like a goblin, I think. Merrick Garland. And I played a clip for you guys on Friday. I may play that again. Should I play that right now? Do you, want, do you want me to play it right now? Can you dig that up? It was Merrick Garland answering, or not answering, really, responding to questions, except non-responsive response, to quote uh, Steve King, Congressman Steve King, to uh, this, this Republican Congressman um, Thomas Massey, I believe out of Kentucky, who was confronting him about the the suspected feds. Was it a fed over in January 6th at the riot saying, we're going to go into the Capitol? And the streamer, um, Baked Alaska, who's been on the fallen state before, was like, oh, fed, fed, fed. They all chanted at this boomer guy or Gen X overweight guy who's dressed up in these fatigues. Desert Storm st- style military fatigue saying, we're going to go into the Capitol building. Though that's where our problem starts or is. No, our problem is not. Those are the symptoms. Those are symptoms of the problem. Our problem is not the politicians. They're not. It's truly not. Anyway, uh, here is, you have it? Here is a clip of Thomas Massey confronting Merrick Garland. I played this on Friday, then I will get back to calls, guys. Hang tight, I promise. Enjoy, or don't, Merrick Garland. Very different from Marty Anderson of OK, single mom doing her best. (laughs) Here. On January 5th and January 6th, uh, during the protests. Thomas Massey. And I've got some pictures that I want to show you, if the uh, the staff could bring those to you. This is Um, last week. January 5th. I'm afraid I can't see that at all. Shut up. That's Mary Garland. I'm afraid I can't see that at all. Fed, fed, fed. Peacefully. What a liar. Is that a fed? All right, Why does he want them you to go have in the cap- images there, and they're captioned? Uh, they were from January 5th and January 6th. As far yep. as we can determine, the individual who was saying he'll probably go to jail, he'll probably be arrested, but he wants every, but they need to go into the Capitol the next day, is then the next day directing people to the Capitol. And as far as we can find, this individual has not been charged with anything. You said this is one of the most sweeping investigations in history. Uh, have you seen that video or Listen to those this. frames from that video? Listen to this. So as I um, 
said at the outset, uh, one of the norms of the Justice Department is to not comment on impending investigations, uh, and particularly not to comment about uh, particular scenes or particular individuals. This okay, is, uh, without, I, I was hoping today to give you an opportunity look to at him playing the rest, dumb. the concerns that people have that there were federal agents or assets of the federal government present on January 5th and January 6th. Can you tell us, without talking about particular incidents or particular videos, how many agents or assets of the Here's federal more. government were present on January 6th, whether they agitated to go into the Capitol, and if any of them did? So I'm not going to violate this norm of, uh, of, of uh, the rule of law. I'm not going to comment on an investigation that's ongoing. What a sick person. And he's all looking up with his mouth open like he's all innocent. All looking up like he's all innocent. He's not innocent. He's a phony. I am so glad that guy didn't make it into the Supreme Court. Obama wanted him into the Supreme Court. And the mainstream media was like, oh, he's a straight arrow. Maybe they didn't say that, but... They're pretending that he was a respectable person. And then so Sleazy Joe puts him as the AG. Or is this Obama? Joe following Obama's instructions. Or, or Joe's just along for the ride. Sleepy, sleepy Joe. What a sick person. And his voice, speak up. Oh, I don't know if I can imitate that voice. Is that a smoker voice? But anyway, I had not known that he sounded that disgusting. And he sounds just like Eric Holder. I talked about this last week. Eric Holder was another guy who dodged questions, pretending, I'm not going to comment on ongoing investigations. Well, he didn't have to. He could have just answered the question rather than changing the subject. What a sleazy liar. Evil people. Inside the government. Terrible. Dan East says, great job, Hake. Take care, all. Thank you, Dan East. I saw that man on Friday at the end of the show. Just want to make sure that I acknowledge it. Asmador with another super chat on Odyssey. Says Ali, Muhammad Ali was drafted in 1967. Segregation was outlawed years before that. So, what a phony. A phony uh, victim, fake victimhood. And people to this day think that desegregation and integration, including blacks, think that that was a mistake. To this day! So... Throat cancer voices, Martin Coldier. Ah, oh, man. Terrible. Um, so was that a Fed? That guy is saying, we're going to go into the Capitol. If he's not a Fed, he's a seemingly, to me, a useful idiot. Like, what good is it? Yeah, I mean, I get you make a scene, right? You make a scene, but the media is not on your side. So when you make a scene, you look, they'll make you look bad. And then they'll have an excuse to come clamp down on you. Dummy. So is, so is that guy who is claiming, we're going to go into the Capitol. That's where our problems are. I don't know the answer to those questions, the, those lyrics. Uh, the rest of those lyrics, ex, all you people talking about big wheels, keep on turning. Uh, but is that a Fed, or is, am I just a sucker who thinks that this guy is just a dumb, useful idiot? Or possibly just a dumb, useful idiot who just gets, you know how boomers and Gen Xers... I, maybe it's not just them. They get caught on some factoid or uh, tactic that they think is going to be, oh, this is going to make the real difference to save the country. Including, like, c nice conservative guys. They're like, we need to call your senators or whatever. That's not even, that might be an example. Or email them. Email your, uh, email these companies that are supporting, uh, Evil, right? Email these companies that are advertising on MSNBC or NBC, the mainstream media. Stop uh, funding it. Is that really going to do anything? So anyway, 100% Fed, says the real Hydro PX. We are all under investigation, Hake. I know. Likely a Fed, Hake, says everything is fake. Who also said I look Jewish. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Let me get back to calls, guys. Uh, Dean in North Carolina. He has a question, I think, or maybe he has a, wants to comment on a frequent question we get. What's up, Dean? It's good to hear from you. Hey, bro. What's going on? Not much. 
Right on, right on. Nice. No, I'm just trying to better understand that whole uh, blame the woman. No, I guess your mom, the woman, for, I don't know, being born out of the hell of Satan, the gates of Satan. <laughs> you're trying to understand. This sounds more maybe like a question for Jesse. But you're asking I, me, I, what I are you asking? What's more. your question? Dude, my question is, why does Jesse blame women? Can you answer that or no? Uh, he blames them for the wrong that they do. Okay. Yeah, you should you should uh, direct some responsibility on people who do wrong, and nobody's holding women <laughs> responsible for the evil that they do. In fact, many people aren't even aware of it. They don't either. They just subconsciously don't let themselves be aware of it. Have you realized or ever forgiven or ha- realized that you hated your mother? After my first relationship in life, I'm 37 years old. After I had my first relationship at like 14 and that girl broke my heart, I was like, oh, now I get it. That's why my dad's not around. My mom's crazy. Just okay. like that woman. Yeah. <laughs> I realized that a long time ago. Yeah. So that's, that's all it is. It's, uh, but it's, it's, like but more, it's, it's more like just common sense that people have lost over time. I don't know what it is. Right. So then how come it's, you're confused by Jesse's talk discussions about women? I mean, because he, he well, it was more, the confusion is more like, all right. Go forgive your mom. But what if your mom has done nothing to forgive you? And Jesse will sit there and hold people like, so your mom's done nothing. So your mom's done nothing. She never made you mad once in your life. So your mom's done nothing. Right. <laughs> That's life, dude. People piss you off. You can be standing at 7-Eleven and get pissed off. So then how come? And then, then you got to control your so, anger because then you're a woman. I understand that. I guess. So, that's, so that shows that these people were, were actually do have something to forgive their mother for. They just have yes, papered over do. it in their... Like, it's kind of pushed out of their consciousness. So it's not everybody don't need to go forgive their mother, do they? Is it just something that everybody needs to go do to get I don't know anyone who doesn't. It's something you do as you grow up. I don't know anyone who doesn't. I'm not saying everybody does. Maybe somebody, people didn't even have their mother, right? Right. Or, you know, somebody else violated them. But usually it's the mother. But you should definitely talk to Jesse Lee about this. So when you realize I, I that at 14, an, maybe, uh, you don't, maybe you didn't realize the depths of this thing, of this situation. When you got your heart broken at 14 or whatever you said, by some, was she an older girl? I, I don't know if it was 14. It was just like, no, it was just like our first relationship. Was she older? Bro, I got five kids. I've been, she, at the time, I think I was older than her, yeah. Okay, you were older. Okay. Yeah. And then you yeah. realized that your mother was crazy. Absolutely. And then did you forgive her? That, for what? For what? What did she do? She's done nothing to me. She, she didn't raise you? My father. She raised me. She yeah, raised you, and then she... Me. Oh, yeah. man, you're, you're a mess. So you're not really examining yourself. <laughs> How am I not? How am I not? Because you, don't, you can't even admit that she did wrong in raising you. You say she was crazy. Myself? That'd be me examining. It would be me examining my mother. Well, examining I mean, your placing judgment on my mother, and the book tells us not to place no judgment on nobody. That's what. But you already do. did judge her. You called her crazy. That show that shows me that you had some when kind of judgment. When I was fourteen judgment. and in a fallen state. When huh? I was fourteen in a fallen state, right? When did you, when did state. you come out of your fallen state? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> probably still in it. <laughs> You're probably still in it. See? <laughs> no, I, I mean. Who, 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 like, is the first, who comes out of a Who is the state? first person who did some sort of injustice against you? To me? Yeah. I, nobody. I don't blame anybody for anything. Who is the first person who did some sort of injustice against you? Injustice against me. I, I can say nobody. I've never had any injustice done against me. Oh, really? Wow. Nah. Then why are, you, when, why are you mad? Not at all. You're not? Okay. Cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> you do JLP silent prayer? I, bro, I, no, I don't. No, absolutely not. I do not. Why do, you, not listen, why do you listen to his show and why do you listen to my show? Just out of curiosity. Because, I mean, I listen to you. I mean, I used to, when I started listening to talk radio, it was all the way when Rush Limbaugh was around. Yeah. Was 790 talk radio. My competitor. He's not no more. But he's off now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I listen to everybody. I, I can go through my podcast, and I got like forty different podcasts I listen to, all the way from 
that dude David Pakman, which you know I, I, he's right. crazy, but all the way to you and Jesse and stuff. I mean, all everything in between. I just like to be informed. So you're a podcast yeah. fiend. You work? <laughs> if that's yeah, absolutely, all day. Wow. I own my own business. I'm, and you you yeah. you own your own business? Yeah, put it on the radio and just listen. Okay. Wow, man. Well, uh, because when I listen to music, music takes me from the past to the present. It gets you all in your mind about. Yeah, it. I understand. It's like, it's like it's like time travel. You know what I mean? So it's right. like I get out of my head with that shit. Yeah. Well, cool. Definitely call into JLP on on this stuff. But what did it, did I say something that prompted you to call in? About I women? think it's just more like the time. No, no, no. It's just the more the time things. Because I'm over here on the East Coast, and when I call in, I forget that Jesse's time is three hours different. Oh, so okay. It's like I'm calling during my lunch hour, or my lunch break, or whatever. I see. And like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, man, uh, just keep on living. You sound like you're a happy Absolutely. person. <laughs> I am, bro. I, I got five beautiful children, bro. I mean, I'm really? Like, I go How old to are you? At, yeah, absolutely. Me, 37. Oh, yeah, you said that. And they're yeah, white. Ba- yeah, yeah. They're white babies, or or what? Yes. Yeah. All white. Cool. Well, well uh, man, but I but wife, I would encourage you. Not to my get first wife. Your first wife. She was all Mexican. Not my first wife. My first uh, baby mama. Is oh actually my gosh. Part Mexican. So my, my first son is actually part Mexican. How did you? How did you become? A, a out of wedlock sex, child having person, at as being white. <laughs> Just, uh, I would say being raised in a secular world, I mean, uh, you just, not good guidance as a, uh, a young child, but I so mean, So then how come you didn't forgive your mother for the bad guidance that she gave you? It wasn't, she gave me great guidance, I didn't pay attention. Oh, come on. Word. <laughs> You're trying to take responsibility when you were a kid, you didn't have responsibility. <laughs> how did I but not? Anyway. I had to get up and brush my teeth? I know, but you don't, uh, what a mess. You didn't, that's you our, just said, you just said you had... If you just said no like, you just said you didn't have great guidance, and then she you she said great guidance, but you didn't pay attention. I didn't. Who, why didn't you pay attention? Why didn't she make you pay attention? Same or way, your you're father? Not paying attention to what I'm saying. Did you know your father? Hey, you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. Did you know your father? No, I did not. No, oh, I okay. did not. Why didn't you forgive your mother for not letting your father be around? Because she let him be around. He just chose not to. Oh, one of those. Typical, <laughs> typical. Blame the man. Like like blame the man. No blame on the woman for what she does wrong. Yeah, I, simp. Yeah, I, I knew that was coming. Simp, <laughs> simp. <laughs> Am I wrong? I can't say that you're wrong about that. No, I can't. I can't say that you're wrong, but I couldn't argue it. But it was just pointless because you're right. stuck in your own way. Well, right. you are too. You're. You, you're not. I, it just seems like you're not. You don't realize the the seriousness of it. No, I do. I realize the seriousness of it. Then how come you don't examine it? I'm examining it now with you. We're okay, cool. It. We're nice. Over That's it. cool. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested, do JLP's silent prayer, man. Because you should be uh, serious about life. You have five kids, including at least one out of wedlock, with a Mexican. I, I, I think I've been pretty serious. Hank, I'm, I can literally retire right now. But that's but on I a physical level. Work. you got to get f- serious spiritually. You're not a spiritual leader yet. You're, you're gr- I respect the business. That's cool. I respect the five kids, although you shouldn't have had that one out of wedlock with a Mexican. Now you can't say that. You can't. It's a beautiful thing, bro. He's a beautiful boy. I'm sure he is. <laughs> out, of evil, out of evil comes... Nice things or whatever, but he's nah, not going to be right. so beautiful when he grows up and becomes a mess. If you don't get right, I don't. You, don't you want to be a, a great father rather than just a uh, a uh, great 100%, businessman? Bro, I hundred percent want to be a great father. I do. I absolutely do. Yeah. Yeah. So get a little more serious about this. This is not a joke. But anyway, I, I that's just my that's joke. just my suggestion. Absolutely. Yeah. And I very much appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you calling in. Even though this is not my wheelhouse, I gave you my best. <laughs> but <laughs> What's if you, your wheelhouse, hey, hey, bro? hey, hey, if you ever want to do, say you don't have time to call in during JLP's, uh, which no. is live nine to noon Eastern, no. uh, you can call into the bond office if you ever want private counseling over the phone or over Skype. Uh, he does offer it. If you're interested. Right so do I. Yeah. 
So you can call in the. Dude, hey, Bray, hey, I very much appreciate it, bro. Yeah, thank you, and, man. Uh, it's great. Rocking, bro. I like your show kicks ass, bro. Real talk. <laughs> thank you, man. Take care, Dean. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Later. Bye. What an interesting guy, huh? Anyway, uh, children born today suffer tomorrow, says the real Hydro PX. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I've seen kids get born and they're all laughing and free and happy and, and uh, real and honest, and then they reach that adolescence, and then they just get dull. Their spirits get killed, and they're just, bleh, they're not themselves anymore. You guys see it happen all the time. Oh, I think you do. But, uh, man, that's, that's an interesting call. Hake's wheelhouse is bad music. Tune in at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. Well, now, Danny, I'm not doing it at the beginning. At least... Th- this is an experiment. This week, I'm not doing it. Uh, let me get to Taranzo out of Oklahoma. Taranzo, how are you? Doing okay. How about yourself? Doing well as well. Thank you, man. Um, man, I sent you an email a while back. I don't know if you got it. Um, from Ed. Follow. But, uh, send a follow-up. If you can find that sent email well, or... I'm- I'm just going to send me another one right now. I'm just going to get it all for you right now. Okay. So I don't, um, I no, may have man, seen those, it. those BHI goons that keep calling in and acting like, you know, BHI uh, black Hebrew black Israelite. Hebrew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're calling them goons. They, well, because when they start that, you're going to bow to me and all that. It's like, okay, now you're putting yourself in the place of God. You know, like that's not, if, if if you really listen to the ones that tell you the truth that aren't on the street corner trying to tell you they're going to whip you and uh, rape your women and, you know, all this other stuff, if you listen to the ones that pay attention, it's described like this. Like, imagine, heaven, uh, imagine the group in heaven as a body. There's going to be the head, and that's going to be the Israelites. And the other people are going to be different parts of the body. But just imagine if one of the one of the parts of the body, like the hands or the feet, aren't there. Every it's going to take everything to make it work, and we're all and whoever goes to heaven is going to be doing it for God, not for them. Even though they're chosen, we're doing it for God, not for them. You see what I'm saying? And, and I it, thought and that a, Jesus was the only head. Well, uh, below him is the Israelites. Oh, okay. They're the neck. <laughs> I guess so. I, I'm just, like the you know, women. Just, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But All right. If, whenever they call with that, with that garbage, I have uh, one scripture you can look up right now if you want to, or I can read it to you one or the other. But just look up Deuteronomy 23, uh, verse 7 through 8. And that right there will shut them up. And it'll put them all <laughs> I doubt where it. they need to go figure out something else to say to you because that pretty much shuts everything they have to say up right I've, there. I've read it to them, actually. Somebody sent this to me. Deuteronomy 23, That's, 7 and 8. Thou shalt not I abhor... I sent that to you. Okay, so thou sh- I've read this on air before. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. I think Big Bump sent this to me, too. Uh, thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian because he was his... Thou wast a stranger in his land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. I read that, and it didn't shut them up. (laughs) You're not going to shut them up, man. There's no shutting these up people up. (laughs) Well, they're they're not being humble like like God tells them to be. True. You know, so all those guys that are, you know, pushing that aggressive religious point of view, that's that's not what God's telling them to do, you know, so— If they don't understand that scripture, then I don't know. It's yeah, that's that's just a that's in the air for them, I guess. Yeah, because that should shut them up right there. Yeah, they're and in reality, they're not even the real Israelites anyway. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just assuming based on what who they've are, what who are what they were told based on what they were told. Who do you think the real ones are? The Jews, of course. Come on, man. I know you know better. I know you <laughs> I don't know, know. I don't know, and I I'm, don't care. Is well, it even relevant? You don't care, but I know you know better. But I is do. it even relevant? Um, is it even something that not, anybody should be taking pride in? 
today. No, you should definitely not be taking pride in anything. So you why should, are they concerning you know. themselves with foolish genealogies, pretending that they're the real Israelites, when everybody knows they're not? Well, they, it, if, you match, if you really look into it, the Scripture matches up that they are. It really oh does. my gosh! But, oh uh, my gosh! You you I've too? You <laughs> I've told you that before, but I hey, know. I'm, I've come to grips with it. I I I actually researched this pretty hard for a long time. Why did I it Why like, did it matter to you? Just the because I didn't believe in God for a lot of years, or I didn't. Uh, I wasn't sure about God. I guess it was called agnostic. I I didn't believe, or I didn't not believe for many years until about four years ago. And then I started realizing, Hey, you know, someone showed me some stuff, God's real, this, that, the other. And then you realize that that's an aspect of the Bible, the Israelites, that's a major aspect of the Bible. So it, if you read it and it, it all, it's all there. I mean, that's all true. But it's but, not the blacks in America, dude. And they're, and the American Indians and the Mexicans, they're not put some of the other tribes, dude. What the heck? Well, let me well let me ask you this. When did <laughs> no, but why do you to... you didn't answer why you cared? You just basically said you were you were not into this stuff, well, and then somebody bothered, told you something, and then you're like, "This is a big part of the Bible, so it's important for me for us today." It doesn't make any sense, man. Well, yeah, because I was researching what I needed to, you know, just researching things about Scripture and God and the Bible and what it means and and the details and and. and you, it's probably better that everybody do that. No, it's because not, man. I because don't know, you're, man. Because you guys are caught up in useless knowledge. That's not useless. Man. Yes, it's it is. It's useless. It's whether they're so Israelites said, or not, whether they're Israelites so when, or not, which they're not, is useless. So when God says, search the scriptures, that's when, the, you know, that Jesus doesn't mean said anything? You s- Jesus said, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, but then you reject me. So you people who are all into searching the scriptures reject Jesus because you don't know God. I reject Jesus because Jesus isn't Christ. That wasn't his name. What a mess. (laughs) See? (laughs) Silliness. You're into silliness. Jesus is a made You're into empty knowledge, man. man. What the heck? Jesus is a straw man to keep people away from get the real God. Is he that's black? Exactly is Jesus black? Uh, I don't know who, what Jesus is, but Christ <laughs> was black. <laughs> man. Yahshua oh was black. <laughs> and that's who Christ is. Jesus is made up, man. All that so-called translation name. My mind is turning numb. Well, I know you know the truth, man, so you can... And the truth is not what you're claiming. Okay, well, when did ships go pick up the people in Israel and take them to a new Egypt? Huh? (laughs) That says... You have something real to talk about? Ships will take you... (laughs) Okay, (laughs) never mind, man. But I I appreciate you, man. Taranzo of Oklahoma. I can break it all down the right way. But if you don't want me to, it's no big deal. It's it's pointless. I'm not into this mess. I mean, it's not necessarily pointless. I mean, doing what's right with God, but I mean, it, you know, it's good to know you information sin? about Scripture. Do what? Do you sin? Uh, no. Nice. No, I don't. Cool. Now, does thoughts enter my mind that are probably sinful thoughts? Yes, but I don't put them there. So, I when, don't when did you stop sinning? Um, I would say probably about six months ago, a year maybe. Really? What prompted it? Just, you know, just trying to be closer to God, and I know that sinning's not gonna, you know, not gonna help you in any fashion. So by trying and realizing that sinning is not going to help you, that's how you stop sinning. Yeah, I pray, and I pray for God's help, and tell Him to help me not be a sinner, and to guide me in the direction He wants me to go. And, and, and that works. You, how you, how yeah, old are you? You're always you're supposed to, I'm 51, you're supposed to thank God, you know, all the time for everything. And you're so, full-blown white. Everything. Well, I don't know what you call full blown, but my dad was white, and that's all that matters. So, I'm oh white. yeah, you're one of those. 
Are you part black? One of those. Is hey, you... even Bible go to guy agreed with me that the father determines your bloodline. I don't know if he went he would go as far as you. Is your mother black? No, she's from born in Syria. She was a uh, Muslim. She's a Muslim. To this day? Uh, I mean, she doesn't practice it. She to buys lottery day. tickets. She don't pray. She don't, you know, their Muslim's big thing is not eating pork. Like, that's the only thing you have to do. <laughs> but, you know, she don't eat pork, and, you know, she she plays the lottery. And Lottery is against I mean, their rules for them? Well, it's gambling. Gambling's not good for any, I don't think any religion says to gamble, but. But, uh, yeah, it was So do you look a little bit Syrian? Mm, I mean... Are the Syrians kind of dark brown skin a little bit? The way I talk, if you saw me and the way I talk, you would never, you know, because I always use my middle name, Ed. Okay, yeah. (laughs) Flatter's Ed. And my last name is not, yeah, exactly, and my last name is not Arabic because it's from my dad, so... Nice, yeah. Right, so... I'm not ashamed of it or anything. I just know what the truth is and know that Islam is satanic, legitimately satanic. Say again? Oh, li- Islam is? Angles. Yeah. Yes, it's absolutely <sighs> satanic. Well, Very bad, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a pleasant man to talk to, Taranzo, but uh, I don't know about this. these people getting into this stuff. But thank you, man. Well, it's, it's, it's going to become more, you know, out in the forefront because... You know, people are realizing that, you know, that's what's going on. <laughs> you know it, Hank. You you just, you just, you you have to keep your persona for the air. I understand. <laughs> what do you, th- what is it that you think that I know? You know who the real Israelites are, and you know the, the people in Israel are not real Jews. And they're just, they're from Cain's bloodline. I don't know about that, and I don't care. I think that it's probably unknowable who the real Israelites are, if they even exist to this day, is what I've heard. I don't, but I truly don't care. I don't see the relevance of it. To this day, well, if you know, I know that you know I, they exist to this day. No, I don't. God's coming. To, I've read the I whole mean, Bible, and I don't know what Christ is. Christ is coming back, and you you're gonna tell me you don't that they don't they're not relevant right now. You're honestly gonna say that. And you've read the Bible? Yes. They're not relevant to to your life or mine. You don't have to know that stuff. Uh, doesn't Paul say, I know nothing except for Christ and him crucified? Something like that. But then you're all into the Israelite thing. No, I understand that. I still, uh, just my curiosity and my just wanting to know the truth about I gotta things. go. I'm, I'm... Uh, my mind is full. I'm, you're about to tell me some more facts, and I can't fill any more facts no, into my I'm, head. I'm just saying, <laughs> I just like to know the truth. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, Christ, you know, you need so to So then, why you, why you right. ask, if you're so into the truth, why are you assuming that I know something that I don't know, and that I'm just protecting my channel or something like that? When I'm not into well, what you guys are into. I don't mean it disrespectfully. No, I know, but I don't, I'm not okay. taking it as disrespectful, but you're okay. saying something, you're just... You're showing me that you're believing something that's not well, because true. Because I know Jesse, I know Jesse knows, and I assume you don't know what you. Jesse knows either. You're just yeah. assuming. We're not, we're not into what you're there's, into. There's, there's a lot of stuff I don't <laughs> want to say. Everybody, if we were in private, I'd explain it to you differently. Or if you know there weren't people, uh, uh, hundreds of people listening, I was going to say thousands, but I don't know how many. So you're hiding the truth from those thousands and hundreds. What truth? Whatever no, truth that you think that we're anything. hiding. I don't want to say anything <laughs> that seems negative towards Jesse because I believe for the you most part what he's doing. You just did. You said something negative towards Jesse, accusing How? him of knowing something that, that he's not telling. doesn't even make well, sense. Well, he knows the truth, but like you say... He's, he's telling the truth. Think it's, he's, no, telling he's telling the, telling the most the important truth. truth. Well, that's, you know, that's to be, that's, you know, your opinion on it. See? But, See, you don't even believe, you don't even agree with JLP. Yeah, I agree with no, you on most things. Most things I do. What's more you important know, than allowed, repentance? Mm, Thank you. Not a lot. Thank you. I mean, like Thank I said, you. I told you. 
What a phony. You, what a sick. You're, trying to you're find, kissing you're up to blacks. You're trying to find something to win on, man. And no, I'm man. I'm just talking. I'm not, no, you're not. You're, you're talking, but you're lying. No. Yes, you are. You're true. lying. Why are you calling me a liar, man? Because you're, a call, you're calling us a liar. You're accusing us of saying something that we believe That's, and know, but we don't know or believe or even liar. care about that you stuff. If you're not indulging uh, information, that doesn't make you a liar. You're accusing us of knowing something that we don't know, man. Anyway, I got to run. All right, man. If, if you want me to, I'll I've tell talked you. to you for to you. 14 minutes. What more do you want? I'm saying if you want me to tell you, I'll <laughs> all tell right. you. But no, no, no. You've it. been playing it coy all this time. You had your chance. You can call in another day and, and so-called tell us. But <laughs> I'm truly not into what you're into. What, what am I into? A bunch of mess. The truth. The truth bothers you. Okay, everybody thinks that they have the truth, man. I gotta go though. The Bible, the Bible. I gotta go. All right, man. <laughs> take care, Taranzo. All right, take care. <laughs> man, he's Syrian, a deceiver, says <laughs> Matthaus Hetzenauer. Butchering that name, Matthews, Matthaus Hetzenauer. Apologies if I'm butchering your name. Um, okay, before I get back to calls, I promised you I would cover this evil woman. I read about this, I read about this lady in Hake News at the end of our, probably two as well, calling for more censorship and transparency from Facebook. She's on the Facebook Oversight Board. This woman, her name is Suzanne Nossel, N-O-S-S-E-L. And I looked up her Wikipedia, and I have to say, gasp, because it was shocking what this woman is into and about. Uh, that's her face. Look at that face. Um, commie censorship. CNN quoted this evil woman. This is a quote from her about Facebook. They've got a lot, they've got to do more to police, police Hatred, vitriol, bullying on the platform. Typical woman, am I right? Trying to police, police hatred and bullying and vitriol. Stupid, huh? On the platform of Facebook. And we're seeing that coming out in spades. Racist. Uh, throughout all of these different revelations. And she's a Facebook oversight board member. These same people said that uh, Facebook did not follow the proper protocol to ban Trump. When they banned him. But then they, they're going to keep the ban on him. She's also a member, a CEO of this fake free speech organization, PEN America. P-E-N, all caps, America. And she's not a Christian, by the way. A fox guarding the hen house. She says Facebook needs to facilitate more transparency. They're under scrutiny, says CNN, who are enemies of America, too. Commie nonsense network, CNN. From multiple angles for current uh, content moderation issues. Look at this evil woman. She was uh, born in New York. The daughter of South African parents. But that's... She's not a Afrikaans. No, she's not. She's not a Boer. Granddaughter of refugees from Nazi Germany who fled to South Africa during the 30s. She traces her interest in human rights, quote-unquote, which is a communist buzzword, to her growing up Jewish in America. What? And uh, her visits to apartheid South Africa in her youth. And look at South Africa today. It's worse. Worse off for these human rights people. She frequently visits, uh, has visited relatives in Israel, saying it's a place where I feel very comfortable and at home. Stay there then. Not being in, she, but meanwhile, she lives in Manhattan with her husband and two children. So listen to her nonprofit career. Susan F. Nossel. Show her a picture again. Oh, oh, and her book after that. Susan Roffel, is it? Nossel? Suzanne Nossel, human rights advocate. Evil. Former government official. Evil. Author. Evil. And CEO, Chief Executive Officer of the literary human rights organization PEN America, which pretends to be for free speech, but they're not. They're against Trump. They're pretending that hate speech is real. They're evil. PEN America is 
is for uh, um, journalists, free speech for journalists, but not for thee, right? The organization has advocated free expression in Hong Kong and China. Remember that? The Hong Kong protests? Commies against commies. Myanmar, Eurasia, and the United States. Pen America has developed programs to focus on campus free speech. She doesn't care about campus free speech, not for the conservatives. Online harassment, not for whites, Art, not for Christians. Artistic freedom, writing for justice, writing for justice, and a range of other issues. Pen America has also expanded literary programming, reimagining the Pen America Literary Awards, World Voices Festival outside New York City, and programs dedicated to amplifying, listen to this, lesser heard voices. So they're probably propping up all these LGBT people, the feminists, the blacks who don't write that well and all this stuff, including incarcerated writers and dreamers. See? Dreamers are the illegals. Evil woman. She previously served as a executive director of Amnesty International, another fake evil human rights organization that hates uh, America. Chief operating officer at Human Rights Watch, a radical or, uh, homosexual organization, right? Globalist. She's served as a board member of... Never mind. Uh, yeah. Listen to this. Government career. She was in the... She was Deputy Assistant Secretary of State in America. But she feels more, home, more at home to chart the course for free speech that also promotes equity and inclusion. In other words, she's not for free speech. What a liar. What a liar. What an evil person. Man. Oh, she went to Harvard, by the way. What a shame. What an evil person dare to speak, defending free speech for all, but then she wants to clamp down on the people's speech. Sick person. Anyway, let me get to Jeremiah in Louisiana. He's been on hold for some time. Um, Jeremiah? How are you doing? Hanky Hank. Hank. Hey. It's been a long time. Shouldn't have left you. Like, <laughs> no, don't do that. I know you're <laughs> black, Hank. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, Stream's I completely know. down. It's not streaming at all. Yeah, it's all good. <clears throat> so, What's going on with you, though, man? How you been? Been fine. How about you? I'm doing good. Doing great. Wonderful. So what you wanted to um, talk about the spiritual law versus the written law? Oh yeah, yeah, Romans seven, right? Back on back back to Romans seven, right? So that's what y'all, that's what you and Bible <laughs> go to, guys. You can hear him uh, turning to can, it. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I'm, I'm turning through through my pages right now. Now we're streaming um, again. We're kicking back on, guys. So uh, it says it's online now. According to According to you and Bible Go To Guy, right? Well, I, I like to you know, stick with old back. But you and um, Bible Go To Guy said that the uh, it's about the living word and not the written word now. And I know a lot of y'all like to go to Paul. So um, do you believe Paul was a, a, a Israelite, right? Or you think he was like a Roman citizen? You think he was like a, a apostle for the Gentiles? Do you believe in Paul? Paul was a Jew, and uh, he was he was ministering to the Gentiles. Okay. So you would okay. So you believe in his his epistles then? Okay, that's good. Um. So we are back, guys. Saying, I think we are back. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So it says, it starts off by saying, "Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law." how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he lives, right? So he starts off by saying he speaks to those who know the law, right? That's where it kind of loses a lot of people because he's only talking to doctorates of the law. Uh, it goes on uh, goes on by saying, um, for the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as, as he liveth. But if the husband is he dead, she is loose from the law of her husband, right? So then, if while her husband lives, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, right? 
Makes makes sense, right? What's your point? All right. So wherefore, it, it goes on to kind of clarify this whole living word and written word thing. Uh, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, right? That ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Uh, it, all, it goes on, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin... You know what? Don't read to law, me. Don't read to me, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, don't read to me. Okay. Because you don't, you don't have yes, a clue what you're talking point. about. You're no, just I rambling. I was getting to the point. No, no you, you, know, you don't have any point. I do have a point. What's what your point? About? What's your point? It says here... No, no, no. Don't, tell, don't read to me. Don't read to me. to what you were saying. I'm going to hang up on you if you keep on reading to me. Are you the devil? You either either you generated? tell me what your point is, or I hang up and uh, you have a good day. My, my point is, are you still ag- agreeing with Bible go-to guy when he said that we are in the living word and not the written word? I don't remember what Bible go-to guy said. You're holding on to stuff oh because gosh. I don't remember what Bible go-to guy said. Okay, but so I generally agree with Bible that, go-to guy, yes. Else. You want to talk about something else? No. You Since called you in about, about the, the spiritual law versus the written law. So, but you're gonna hang up on me if I if when, when I get if my, you I'm read trying, if read you this, read, but, read because it's so boring. But you don't even have you point. have no understanding of what you're t- talking but about. This was going to your point, Hank. I don't care. You you're reading like and it's you, boring you really and nobody like understands what you're talking you are about. A demon, and you like you right right. You act so arrogant like you're leading me somewhere and you're not. You're really contradictory. You are really contradictory. You're such a phony. You're a phony. But how you're the you're a I, mean, nasty, vindictive person to, citing the Bible. How can I get to what I was talking about and you can't even you can't even fathom me talking <laughs> reading the Bible. You don't read the Bible, Hank. Right? I read you know it. That that I read it. I read it with that, understanding. No, you don't, you don't you read it with understanding. understanding. No. That guy that just called and said that the uh the, the Israelites need to have uh humility. When has Esau had ever been humble about anything? Yeah, it's not your concern. That, uh, That's not your that, concern. That, that the Christ, Esau, that is Esau is long he dead. Esau is long dead. You don't. Did, you no, don't. Not. Your moral you, standard is he not the white man. <laughs> he li- Yeah, he lives in you. Your moral standard is not the white man, Jeremiah. What do you mean? I know it's not. <laughs> so then, why do you about? care whether Esau is humble or not? You're not because humble. He said he you said are not humble. People need to be humble. No, you are not humble. He said black people. He said yeah. black people. I am very humble. No, you're I'm not. Humble. What the heck? He said black people need to be you humble. You think you're humble? That's what he said. That's oh, you are, said. Very humble. are very humble. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Y'all. Oh, you are and very he humble. Said empathy is a, is a beta. Jeremiah, you're getting muffled. Sarcasm is a beta word. You're getting muffled, Hello? Jeremiah. I can't understand you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, stay close to your phone. Yeah, I'm very close to my phone. All didn't right. you say didn't you say sarcasm is a beta word? I don't know. I think that the you, you did. But no, you, but you, you, but you don't you, know me, you man. You just hold on to you hold on to Esau. stuff that I under, that I say, picking it apart when okay, you don't even understand the meaning back, of the things that you read. Can we get back to the, the, the sin willfully thing then? Can we go to what, sin willfully then? You're jumping around like maze. No, because you want me to. You said you said that I you don't want me to go to Romans seven. You're, so let me let me talk about the, the, the well. The I don't want you to read to me because reading is boring, oh. especially when you have no clue what you're talking oh. about. So when you ask, do I sin? And I said, I don't sin willfully. I want to nah, man, you're breaking up, Jeremiah. I did. Louisiana stinks. When when I felt like I expounded on it enough, you didn't understand it because you're stupid as hell. Yeah, but um. Because I but asked you, you a yes or no. I remember you asking. Don't, you don't want me to go to that. You're either. ignoring. You're ag- okay. you're jumping around. You're ignoring the fact that you are not humble, but you're pretending that you're humble, and then you're jumping around to saying that uh, you're jumping over to that. Do you still sin? Question, and you said not because willfully. You don't want me to. You don't want me to. <laughs> it's go a to yes or no seven. question so whether you sin or not. That you wanted me to go to. It's a yes Do or you no know question. Why this country is falling. What's, what's it's a yes or no question, buddy. I gotta go. Black stepdad. In Los Angeles, California. What's up, Black Stepdad? Hey, what's up, Hank? Hey. Hey, Hank. Um, Jeremiah just talks about the same racist, thing over and over again. Anyway, go ahead, yeah, Black Stepdad. Yeah, but how long have you been a racist, brother? <laughs> oh, my life. Uh, it's, Good, in our, it it's in my DNA. It's in white people's <laughs> DNA. <laughs> Good, I want some of that, brother. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um... 
Are you guys? Is it, is it raining hard over there? Maybe that's why your stream is coming out crazy. Oh, it could be. Maybe that's yeah, what happened. You know, yeah, the, the storm is coming. So yeah. Um, uh, a question for you. I know you like to to joke around when the when the liberals and the women say that. Oh, diversity is our greatest strength. Right. You know, I I I, I kind of see what they mean by that. I don't I don't agree with it when they when they emotionalize it or when they feminize it. But I do see what they mean that we have a lot of people here. You know. Yeah, and I know. I, I, I know because thing. I know that I think, that can trick the intellectuals into accepting yeah, it as yeah. a as a positive thing. I totally understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, because they see and they go, "Oh, that sounds so good. That makes me right. feel good." And like, but wait, but wait a minute. Like the way they're trying to implement it is totally wrong. Yeah, because it's a it's a like female it mindset. Man, can you call me back tomorrow on this stuff? Uh, we'll see. I got to go back to work. Okay. Off, so. Call me we'll another time, man. Appreciate it, Black All Stepdad. Right, Take Not care. Be racist, man. <laughs> All right. Rick and J Robert and the rest of the callers, I cannot get to you. Rick from Hampton wanted to talk about that Alec Baldwin shooting. Robert in Kansas, his snake, wanted to talk about Obama's background and the birther stuff. But I got to end it, guys. We have music to play. This isn't another okay song. You might want to mosey on out of here, but I'm going to play it. This track is entitled Natural. And uh, I somewhat disavow the song, but it's catchy. Enjoy Natural by OK, and hopefully I will see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Take care. Like a mug. Close them up, close your eyes up real tight. I could write you a novel tonight. I could write you a new song each day. It's a natural part of my day. Hope you guys are enjoying this last song. Don't you hate fake love songs? This is sick, says Austin 360. What if we're not enjoying this? What then? See, that guy might not be a Christian. Ah, uh, I want you to be happy. This is haunting, says War Eagle. Well, guys, thank you, and have a good day. Take care.